Welcome back. This is my continuation of a countdown of the 10 best nebulae for astrophotographers. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it right here for you to check out. All right, number five is the Lagoon Nebula. The Lagoon is one of the brightest diffuse nebula in the sky. It's also in a very dynamic part of the night sky, right in the core of the Milky Way, meaning looking into the center of our own galaxy. It's nice and bright on its own, but in an even wider field of view, we can capture IC1275 and the Trifid Nebula as well. At negative 24 degrees in declination, it's well situated for the southern hemisphere and most of the northern hemisphere. Those at about 50 degrees north or higher will have to travel south to capture it well though. Number four is the Horsehead Nebula. Discovered by Wilhelmina Fleming on a glass plate photograph in 1890, today it's one of the most famous nebula due to the many photographs of it as it really does look exactly like a horse head in profile. It's mostly a dark nebula obscuring part of an interestingly shaped uh, red H2 region. It can carry, um, it can be a bit challenging to photograph since it's relatively small at just about eight arc minutes tall and very close to a bright star called Alnitak that can give some troubles with reflections. The Hubble Space Telescope has shown that it's really beautiful in non-visible wavelengths like the infrared as seen here. At negative 0.5 degrees declination, it's well situated for most of the world to see at some point in the year. Number three is the Rho Ufuyuki Cloud Complex. Yellow reflection nebulae are relatively rare and usually small, but the one around Antares, the Antares Nebula, is large and brilliant. And then there is so much else going on in this region, including a red emission nebula, a blue reflection, and dark nebula streamers going off to the core of the Milky Way. If you like lots of color, then this region of the sky cannot be beat. You could focus on just one part of this scene with a telescope. To capture the whole thing, you're either going to need to build a mosaic of images if using a telescope, or if you use a camera lens, I think 135 millimeters up to about 200 millimeters is great for row. At negative 24 degrees, it's the same uh, situation as Lagoon, good for most people except for the high northern latitudes. Number two is the Carina Nebula. This one has so much going on. It's one of those nebula you could probably spend years photographing and never run out of creative new things to do with it, especially with narrowband filters. The whole thing is over a two degrees across, but you can also focus on various parts within it. This Hubble image of a small feature within the Carina Nebula, uh, they called the Mystic Mountain, is one of my favorite astrophotographs of all time. I've never shot any part of the Carina myself as I still have to get down to the Southern Hemisphere with some astrophotography gear, um, but I really look forward to it on my next trip. Number one is the Orion Nebula. Probably not a surprise. It was the first nebula I photographed and I'm guessing it's the first nebula the majority of astrophotographers start with. Uh, it's easy to find, it's super bright. The core region is actually so bright that some people think it's not really a beginner target. I tend to disagree because I think blow out the core, even with a blown out core, it's still incredibly beautiful. Like most nebulae on this list, there are many different approaches to Orion. There's lots of beautiful dust all around it and you can bring that dust out with a deep integration, meaning lots of total time. It has a companion, which is the Running Man and the Running Man is really just as beautiful as Orion itself. Lastly, the whole constellation of Orion is full of amazing nebulae. You can just start with Orion and go from there. It's well situated for most of the world at negative five degrees declination. Here in the north, it's definitely a winter object. So depending on where you live, you may have to brave the snow and cold temperatures, but it's well worth it. Well, I hope you enjoyed my list. I'm sure there'll be some strong opinions about what I included or left off. Feel free to share in the comments. Till next time, this is Nico Carver from Nebula Photos, Clear Skies.